Hello students, welcome to the lecture on forecasting techniques and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the forecasting and operation, understand the characterizing demand, discuss the purpose of forecasting demand, define the extrapolation techniques of demand forecasting, explain the quantitative methods forecast, explain the qualitative methods, define the steps involved in forecasting, understand the time series and seasonal indices. Let's start with the concept of forecasting technique. Forecasts are a basic input in the decision processes of operation management because they provide information on future demand. The importance of forecasting to operation management cannot be overstated. The primary goal of operations management is to match supply to demand Having a forecast of demand is essential for determining how much capacity or supply will be needed to meet demand. For instance, operations need to know what capacity will be needed to make staffing and equipment decision. Budget must be prepared. Purchasing needs information for ordering from suppliers and supply chain partners need to make their plans. Two aspects of forecast are important. One is expected level of demand, the other is a degree of accuracy that can be assigned to a forecast that is the potential size of forecast error. The expected level of demand can be a function of some structural variation such as a trend or seasonal variation. Forecast accuracy is a function of the ability of forecaster to correctly model demand, random variation and sometimes unforeseen events. Forecast affects decision and activities throughout an organization in accounting, finance, human resources, marketing and management information system, MIS, as well as in operation and other parts of an organization. Here are some examples of uses of forecast in business organization. There's one month left in the quarter and your sales team hasn't hit their forecast. As a sales manager, you want to see where you can help get deals across the line. Let's take a closer look. Here we have Valerie, a sales manager for Cirrus, a mid-sized textile manufacturer. If you're Valerie, you want a roll-up of your forecast in one place so you can effectively manage your team. Here, you can see all of your direct reports, broken out by month and forecast category. You can also see all of the important opportunity details down below. This gives you an up-to-the-minute view into the health of your pipeline and how everyone is tracking. And if you want to see how they're doing against quotas, it's just a few clicks. Now you can stay on top of the business and reps know when they're hitting the mark and where there are gaps. Let's take a look into how one of your reps, Frank Whiting, is doing this month. It looks like he's only closed 30% of his quota. So as his manager, you need to know the deals you can help push over the line. With Chatter, you can quickly reach out to Frank. After talking about his opportunities, you feel comfortable adjusting the commit number. As a manager, it's easier than ever for you to adjust the forecast. And in real time, your adjustment rolls up the entire management chain. Your sales executive team now has an accurate view of the forecast with any changes you've made. And because it's in Salesforce, it's easy to analyze the data. Say your VP of Sales asks you for a report. He wants to see the pipeline for the rest of the year broken down by forecast category. With Salesforce Analytics, you can easily create reports and dashboards on your forecast data. And with a quick at mention, share it with your VP of Sales. And just like everything in Salesforce, collaborative forecasts can be tailored to match your business processes. You can easily customize the forecast categories, change the forecast range or the currency, modify the opportunity list view. Let us now understand the forecasting and operation. Forecasts are vital to every business organization and for every significant management decision. While a forecast is never perfect due to the dynamic nature of the external business environment, it is beneficial for all levels of functional planning, strategic planning and budgetary planning. Decision makers use forecasts to make a many important decisions regarding the future direction of the organization. Forecasting technique and models can be used both qualitatively and quantitatively and their level of sophistication depends on the type of information and the impact of the decision. The forecasting model a firm should adopt depends on several factors including forecasting time horizon, data availability, accuracy required, size 
of forecasting budget and availability of qualified personnel. Projections are long-term high-level efforts to establish the scope of the opportunity. Budgets are an effort to establish an operating framework for the coming year. And forecasts are done in for a year to establish what is likely to happen. It's long-term, short-term, and real-time. Forecasts are typically done mid-year but they can and should be done whenever the actual performance differs significantly from what was budgeted. Forecasts are not an attempt to throw out the budget. The company should continue to measure itself and report against the budget. The forecast should exist beside the budget and show what management thinks is likely to happen. Forecasts are important for a variety of reasons but first and foremost you want to know where your cash balances will actually be. And you'll want to know where you will be on your revenue growth trajectory. If you are planning on doing a financing, forecasts are important because they will give you an indication of what the metrics investors will be using when they offer you terms for a financing. The process of doing a forecast is not very hard. You simply take the model you used for budgeting and put new numbers in for revenues and costs. The way most forecasts go down is the revenues are taken down to reflect slower sales growth. Then management looks at the costs in the budget. In some cases, costs are not adjusted because management feels that they need to continue to invest in the business. But in many cases, costs are adjusted down somewhat to reflect a desire to conserve cash. Either way, you'll have a new set of numbers for the months ahead. You combine these new sets of numbers for the coming months with the actual results for the months that have already happened and you have your forecast. Once you do a forecast, it is a good idea to keep updating it as the year develops. If you do a forecast at mid-year and by the fall that forecast is off, do another forecast. The forecast is not another budget you have to try to meet. It is an attempt to estimate actual results. So keep adjusting the forecast in and attempt to nail it. As you get into the fall, you will start budgeting for the next year. Use the learning that came from the forecasting exercise to make next year's budget better. Think of budgets and forecasts as agile financial management. The budget is the annual release and the forecasts are the iterations based on feedback. Now moving on to the next topic. Now we will study the characterizing demand. Demand forecasting is an important aspect of business operation. It is applicable to many different functional areas such as sales marketing and inventory management. Proper demand forecasting also allows for more efficient and responsive business planning. Because of the benefits it can bring, many industries have paid great attention to demand variability management and forecasting. Tourism and manufacturing are the two major industries who adopt a wide range of demand forecasting and variability management solutions. There are huge amounts of literature dedicated to demand forecasting as well as demand variability management. Most demand forecasting technique discussed in the existing literature assume that the demand function is clinical in nature with trend. The time varying nature of some demand function also increases the difficulty in establishing the demand function type and the right model to be used. Let us know the meaning of purpose of a forecasting demand. Demand forecasting is essential for a firm because it must plan its output to meet the forecasted demand according to the quantities demanded and the time at which these are demanded. The forecasting demand helps a firm to arrange for the supplies of the necessary input without any wastage of materials and time and also helps a firm to diversify its output to stabilize its income over time. The purpose of demand forecasting differs according to the types of forecasting. The purpose of the short-term forecasting, it is difficult to define short run for a firm because its duration may differ according to the nature of the commodity. For a highly sophisticated automatic plan, three months time may be considered as short run, while for another plan duration may extend to six months or one year. Time duration may be set for demand forecasting depending upon how frequent the fluctuations in demand are. Short term forecasting can be undertaken by a firm for the following purpose. 
appropriate scheduling of production to avoid problems of overproduction and underproduction, proper management of inventories, evolving suitable price strategy to maintain consistent sales, formulating a suitable sales strategy in accordance with the changing patterns of demand and extent of competition among the firms, forecasting financial requirements for the short period, the purpose of long-term forecasting. Concept of demand forecasting is more relevant to the long term than the short run. It is comparatively easy to forecast the immediate future than to forecast the distant future. Fluctuation of a larger magnitude may take place in the distant future. In fast developing economy, the duration may go up to 5 or 10 years, while in stagnant economy, it may go up to 20 years. Moreover, the time duration also depends upon the nature of the product for which demand forecasting is to be made. The purpose are planning for a new project, expansion and modernization of an existing unit, diversification and a technological upgradation. Assessing long-term financial needs, it takes time to raise financial resources, arranging suitable manpower, it can help a firm to arrange for specialized labor force and personal, evolving a suitable strategy for changing pattern of consumption, extrapolation techniques of demand forecasting. There are numerous techniques of demand forecasting that can be used to control inventory. These are listed below with an explanation of their use. Time series analysis. This is based on the assumption that the item being forecasted follows a similar pattern over time. The forecaster must identify this pattern to develop his or her forecast. The basic element of this pattern are constant value, trend, seasonal variation, clinical variation, random variation, turning points, time series Forecasting techniques include simple moving averages, weighted moving averages and exponential smoothing, qualitative. Qualitative forecasting consists of gathering opinions from a variety of people, then applying their own judgment. This technique is best used when there is not sufficient historical data. Causal. This is the application of leading indicators to create a forecast. It assumes demand is strongly related to these indicators. Mortgage rates, for instance, strongly affect the purchase of new homes. Simulation. Simulation forecasting combines the causal and time series method. It is often used when creating what-if scenarios. As in all statistical analysis, time series data is collected from the real-life thing that we are interested in. The data is analyzed using a computer to give graphic and numeric output. The output of the analysis tells us more about the real life condition. It can be used to make informed predictions of future values. A time series is a set of numerical measurements of the same entity taken at equally spaced intervals over time. Time series data can be collected yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, or even hourly. Here are some examples of time series. Average monthly temperature. Annual profit for a company. Daily petrol price at the pump. Hourly electricity consumption in the home. Daily takings at a Chinese takeaways. Quarterly house sales. Time series data has four aspects of behavior, trend, seasonality, cycles, and unexplained variation. There can also be irregularities or outliers in the data which can be related back to real-world occurrences. Trend is the overall long-term direction of the series. Economic series usually go up, except when they don't. Some series have no discernible trend. Seasonality occurs when there is repeated behaviour in the data which occurs at regular intervals. Seasonality is related to seasonal natural or human behaviour. Cycles occur when a series follows an up and down pattern that is not seasonal. The cycle can be of varying length, which makes them more difficult to detect than seasonality. In all data, there is random variation. Some time series will be very regular, with little random variation, while others may consist of not much else. Sometimes there are strange dips or jumps in a series. 
These can be due to a one-off event, such as an ash cloud disrupting air travel, or an anticipated change in the rate of sales tax. Quantitative methods forecast. Quantitative forecasting techniques are generally more objective than their qualitative counterparts. Quantitative forecasts can be time series forecasts, that is a projection of the past into the future, or forecasts based on associative models, that is based on one or more explanatory variables. Time series data may have underlying behaviors that need to be identified by the forecaster. In addition, the forecast may need to identify the causes of the behavior. Some of these behaviors may be patterns or simply random variation. Have you ever heard of an occupation that rewards an employee for being wrong? Surprisingly, you can, as a demand forecaster, be wrong and still remain in the company's good graces. Why are errors in this occupation tolerated when they would likely lead to dismissal in other job roles? The answer lies in the fact that all organizations have a need to understand and quantify future customer demands for its products and services. This knowledge will facilitate decisions that can significantly increase the competitiveness and profitability of the organization. For example, an organization projecting 25% annual growth will need to invest in manufacturing capacity upgrades and additions in the future. Failure to do so on a timely basis would likely result in lost sales, expediting costs, and low employee morale. Forecasts are often wrong. Luckily, the decisions required to operate a successful enterprise rarely require 100% accuracy. As long as the demand forecast is reasonably accurate, the organization can still make the correct decision. Continuing with the previous illustration, if forecasted growth was 25%, while actual annual growth was 28%, the company will still need to expand in the future. While the timing of their capacity expansion may be slightly incorrect, the plan to add capacity is still valid. In other words, the forecast was value-adding. Causal models. These models are more complex in nature and involve interrelationship of many variables tied together. In a quantitative model, these models are primarily used to predict economic trends and are based on a multitude of factors, probabilities and assumptions. No matter what model or method is used, forecasting basically rests on human judgment. Even the most sophisticated models have to be interpreted by humans. Break-even analysis. Break-even analysis is also a very important quantitative forecasting tool. It is a composite of various elements like total revenue, fixed cost, variable cost, and total cost. Budget. Budget also helps to forecast things. It is through budget an organization can give expression to the plan in terms of costs and revenues. Scheduling. It is part of an action plan and it is the process of establishing a time sequence for the work to be done. Inventory. A technique that is invoked is economic order quantity, ECQ. Its object is to ensure maintenance of an adequate inventory on hand at the lowest total cost to the organization. Linear programming. Linear programs are also used for forecasting. Linear programming is the optimization of an outcome based on some set of constraints using a linear mathematical model. Regression analysis. Regression analysis statistically relates a signals to one or more explanatory independent variables. Explanatory variables may be marketing, decision, price chances, for instance, competitive information, economic data, or any other variable that can be related to sales. Exponential smoothing makes an exponentially smooth weighted average of past sales, trend, and seasonality to derive the forecast. Moving average. Moving average takes an average of a specified number of past observations to make a forecast. As new observations become available, they are used in the forecast and the oldest observations are dropped. Box Jenkins. Box Jenkins uses the auto-correlative structure of sales data to develop auto-regressive moving average forecast from past sales and forecast errors. Trend Line Analysis. Trend line analysis fits a line to sales data by minimizing the squared error between the line and actual past sales values. The line is that projected into the future as a forecast. 
decomposition. Decomposition breaks the sales data into seasonal, clinical, trend, and noise components and projects each into the forecast. Straight line projection. Straight line projection is a visual extrapolation of the past data which is projected into the future as the forecast. Life cycle analysis. Life cycle analysis bases the forecast upon whether the product is judged to be in the introduction, growth, maturity, or decline stage of its life cycle. Simulation. Simulation uses computer to model the forces which affect sales, customers, marketing plans, competitors, flow of goods, etc. The simulation model is mathematical replication of the actual corporation. Expert system. Expert system use the knowledge of one or more forecasting experts to develop decision rules to arrive at a forecast. Neutral networks. Neutral networks looks for patterns in previous history of sales and explanatory data to uncover relationship. These relationships are then used to produce a forecast. Qualitative methods. Qualitative forecasting techniques are generally more subjective than their quantitative counterpart. Qualitative techniques are more useful in the earlier stages of the product life cycle when less past data exists for use in quantitative methods. Qualitative methods include the Delphi technique, Salesforce forecast, opinions of Salesforce members, nominal group technique, NGT, jury of executive opinions, user expectation via surveys, questionnaires, and other tools, and market research. These techniques are primarily based upon judgment and intuition, and especially when sufficient information and data is not available, so that complex quantitative techniques cannot be used. Widely used qualitative methods are jury of executive opinion. This is a method by which the relevant opinions of experts are taken, combined and average. These opinions could be taken on an individual basis or there could be a brainstorming group session in which all members participate in generating new ideas that can later be evaluated for their feasibility and profitability opinions of the sales person. The salespeople being closer to consumer can estimate future sales in their own territories more accurately. Based on these and the opinions of sales manager, reasonable trends of the future sales can be calculated. These forecasts are good for short-range planning since sales people are not sufficiently sophisticated to predict long-term trends. Consumers' expectation. This method involves a survey of the customer as to their future needs this method is especially useful where the industry serves a limited market based on the future needs of the customer. A general overall forecast for the demand can be made. The Delphi method. The Delphi method originally developed by Rank Corporation in 1969 for forecasting military events has become a useful tool in other areas also. It is basically a more formal version of the jury of opinion method. Delphi method is similar to jury of executive opinion technique. The main difference, the members do not meet in committee. A project leader administers a questionnaire to each member of the team which asks questions usually of a behavioral nature. The questioning then proceeds to a more detailed second stage which asks questions about the individual company. The process go on to further stages where appropriate. The ultimate objective is to translate opinion into some form of forecast. In the Delphi method, an attempt is made to develop forecast through group consensus. Bayesian decision theory. Bayesian decision theory has been placed under techniques, although it is really a mixture of subjective and objective technique. This technique is similar to critical path analysis in that it uses a network diagram and probability must be estimated for each event over the network. Scenario writing method. Under the scenario writing approach, the forecaster starts with different sets of assumptions. For each set of assumptions, a likely scenario of the business outcome is charted. Thus, the forecaster generates several different future scenarios corresponding to different sets of assumptions. The decision maker or business person is presented with the different scenarios and has to decide which scenario is most likely to prevail. A subjective approach method. Subjective approach allows individuals participating in the forecasting decision to arrive at a forecast based on their feelings, ideas and personal experiences. 
Many corporations in the United States have started to increasingly use this subjective approach. Internally, these subjective approaches sometimes talk the form of brainstorming section in which manager, executives and employees work together to develop new ideas or to solve complex problems. At other times, a subjective approach may take the form of a survey of the company's sales people. This approach, which is known as a sales force composite or grassroots method, is relied on because sales people interact directly with purchaser and it is assumed, therefore, that they have a good feel for which products will or will not sell and in what quantities. Steps involved in forecasting There are usually five basic steps in any forecasting task. Step 1. Problem definition. Often this is the most difficult part of forecasting. Defining the problem carefully requires an understanding of how the forecast will be used, who requires a forecast and how the forecasting function fits within the organization requiring the forecast. Step 2. Gathering information. There are always at least two kinds of information required. Statistical data and accumulated expertise of the people who collected the data and used the forecast. Step 3. Preliminary exploratory analysis. Always start by grabbing the data. Are there consistent patterns? Is there a significant trend? Step 4. Choosing and fitting model. Which model to use depends on the availability of historical data, the strength of relationship between the forecast variable and any explanatory variables and the way forecasts are to be used. Time series methods make forecasts based solely on historical patterns in the data. Time series methods use time as independent variable to produce demand. In a time series, measurements are taken at successive points or over successive periods. The measurements may be taken every hour, day, week, month or year or at any other regular or irregular interval. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Forecasting demand helps a firm to arrange for the supplies of the necessary inputs without any wastage of materials and time and also helps a firm to diversify its output to stabilize its income over time. The concept of demand forecasting is more relevant to the long run than the short run. Qualitative forecasting consists of gathering opinions from a variety of people then applying their own judgment. Causal is the application of leading indicators to create a forecast. It assumes demand is strongly related to these indicators. Mortgage rates, for instance, strongly affect the purchase of new homes. Budget also helps to forecast things. It is through budget and organization can give expression to the plan in terms of costs and revenues.